Uh, uh, some some of the board members uh, cannot be be cannot attend this this general assembly, like Bocha, uh, for example. And uh, oh, here's the second one. Bocha cannot attend because he didn't get free from his uh, employer, new employer, so he took on a new job. Uh, or here, unfortunately, broke his leg on the very first day in the morning, just before we opened everything. So he worked really, really hard on the conference and didn't really get to enjoy it. So it's a, it's a bit sad. Um, and so he's, I think he's still in hospital, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, is this is this uh, being live streamed? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very good. So hi, Oya. <laughs> right. Well, first of all, a big welcome to all the new EPS members. We uh, just had this very very short board meeting where we voted in another six new board members, uh, new EPS members. So we now have 172 members. Of course, we always like to get new members, and people can just sign up on the website, and then uh, every now and then the, the board then meets and votes in the new members. Um, the uh, General Assembly is for the EPS is very formal, because the, the agenda for the General Assembly is basically baked right into the bylaws, so we have to follow it. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to select a chairman of the, of the meeting, secretary, two checkers of the minutes, and then we need, the first thing that we need to do is a motion to establish the timeliness of the call to the meeting. The bylaws state that we have to call for the meeting at least 14 days before the meeting, and uh, the last uh, things that, c that can go on the agenda have to be announced to the members at least five days before the meeting. So um, let's start with the first one, meeting chairman. Who wants to run the, the uh, for example, the, the voting process? Moderate? Alex, maybe? Yeah, okay, you do it. <laughs> then we need uh, a secretary, so basically the person uh, taking the minutes. You're taking the minutes, okay. Then we need two checkers of the minutes. We're going to check the minutes right after the meeting, so it's not it's not something that takes us long. It's just okay, Vicky and one more, and Rowan. Perfect. So we have two checkers. Um, I think we need to write these down, right? Uh, you have to manage the voting. Yeah, raise hands, you can't, and then you, you need to write that down. Oh, it's Stefan. No, no, Stefan is taking the notes. So, oh, you want to be a checker. So we still need a secretary. So can, can, can we have someone who's good at writing English and uh, can do the minutes? Uh, yeah, to write down, take notes, what the, the actions we are taking. I need to write, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Flores. <laughs> yeah, it's better to come down here, probably. You need to manage the voting. The, the agenda is more or less a given, so there's nothing much to do there, and it's all listed on these slides. So, so the first thing that you have to note is uh, when we started the meeting, so that is uh, 1440. Started 1440. Chair of the meeting is Alex. Then we have one checker is Raoul, and the other one is Stefan. I think Vicky also uh, wanted to check, right? So we have three checkers. <laughs> okay, so the first. Sorry? Vicky. Vicky. 
So now uh, it's your job. We need a motion for establishing the timeliness of the call of the meeting. Yes, in favor, abstain, and who's against? I can, I can, uh, let me just open the, let me open the, the uh, calls. Um, Here, so we um, wrote a blog post for the for the invite. This is the invite, and it was sent on. Uh, let me see down here. Two weeks ago. There you go. It was sent on. What's that? July sixth. Yes. And then the last um, the last things that were put on the agenda that was. Uh, was an email from uh, Kirsten. She uh, wrote that email on Saturday, so it's five months, bef uh, five uh, days before the before the meeting. So we can uh, take those into account as well. Yeah, we'll be reading the email later. Right. Yeah, we're going to show the email. So now we need to vote on this. Who's Alex. first part is done. Uh, then we have the annual report by the board. I'm going to do this part and then I'm going to pass uh, on to, to Fabio. So these are the EuroPython 2015 results. Um, this data is from March uh, 2016. So the total revenue of the conference was about 530,000 euros. Uh, we made a profit of 92,777 uh, euros and 60 cents. And the EPS share for this, because the EPS gets 50%, 50 uh, we, we always share with the on-site organization, um, we get 46,388.80 euros. And of that share, we have already received uh, 1,000 euros to a PayPal account. I'm gonna, uh, we're going to go into that issue later on. It's not really an issue. It's not that the ACPISS doesn't want to pay us. It's, uh, the issue is that we don't have access to our own bank accounts. So, <laughs> so it doesn't really make sense sending money there because we cannot get it out again. Um, so compared to Europe in 2014, that's uh, an order of magnitude higher, which is quite amazing. And for this year, the expectation is that we're probably going to be in at least that five five digit range uh, again. Yes? Do we have to be careful not to be too profitable in the long run with the um, non profit organization? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. It's also a question that we have asked ourselves. <laughs> Yes. There is. I think.
I, I, I just to add on this, I think it's on the, the board members we have discussed a lot of times like uh, the EuroPython Society not being only EuroPython conference uh, driven, so supporting local, uh, you You're know. Taking away all the thunder. <laughs> well, um, yeah, you know to improve things in general. Right, so uh, the, the only thing I want to add, uh, we add here is that we, have, in Sweden, uh, as, as far as Jacob told us a couple of years ago, uh, you have to watch out once you reach uh, a bank account balance of about 100,000 euros. I'm not sure whether that number is correct, whether this... It's an approximate number. So yes. So at, if, if at any one point you have more than that amount in the bank, then you need to do extra stuff and uh, you need to be careful. So we're not at that uh, level yet, so we don't have to really worry right now. Uh, we may have to worry maybe next year, but uh, we're gonna have some other things that we want to tell you yeah. to maybe resolve this. So uh, if, you're not, if you were not here at the previous uh, talk, uh, we already gave the timeline of the conference, so I'm just gonna go through this very quickly. So we had the election of the new board in July last year. In November, we launched the new uh, uh, the, the preview site, and then in, in January we start work on the on this year's conference, and then we went through all the phases of that, like launch a website, launch a ticket sales, a call for proposals, then uh, talk voting, um, the financial aid program we had again, uh, which was generously sponsored by the PSF in uh, most parts. So we added some money as well, of course, but uh, most of it was actually came from the PSF. And I also have, still have to do a blog post about that. Daria wrote a nice summary. I still have to um, turn that into a blog post. Uh, so I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. Um, then we had the second CFP, which was new this year. We wanted to, uh, because the first CFP is about, when was it, like five months before the, the conference? More or less. It, it's, or less, okay, less. Well, Originally, we wanted to do that all, everything a little earlier, but it turned out to be a bit later. Uh, we wanted to have the possibility to react to new hard things that happen just before the conference, because if, if there's a long delay between uh, the conference and the CFP, then uh, you basically you lose on some of the new developments. Like, for example, a new PEP was released or accepted, and you want someone to, uh, to do a talk about that. Of course, you cannot know six months or five months before the conference, so we have the second phase to address that. And that was new. That was a new uh, idea of the program work group. Um, then we had a new conference app this year. We switched from Guidebook away to uh, Attendify, and Attendify has so far been uh, really good. Uh, we really like it, and we're probably going to stay with it. And then, of course, we had the, the conference and general assembly today. Uh, this is a chart showing the ticket sales. You can see in the background, you can, you can see this, this uh, yellowish, brownish uh, curve. That's uh, 2015, and the purple one is uh, 2016. So it looks more or less the same. We started a bit earlier, and um, down there, the, the smaller ones are the uh, social event tickets. So this is a snapshot of July 14th. That's when I uh, updated these slides. Uh, in the end, the, the curve looked, well, it basically looked like the 2015 one, so there wasn't much change there. And this does, doesn't account the, the tickets bought uh, on desk, I think. Right, the on desk uh, tickets are not included in this, so. Sorry? I think today is the 21st. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, my calendar. Maybe just for the, the for the protocol, yeah, it might yeah, be a problem. Yeah, right. Let's, let me just fix that. Oops. Right. So there you go. Better. Right. So in the end, we we sold about uh, 1,100 tickets plus some uh, on-site. I don't have the exact numbers for that. So what's new in 2016? Well, the, the major new development was adding the Telegram uh, groups to, uh, to help uh, work in those work groups. That was a really good thing to do. It's also much more fun doing it that way. 
Uh, then we invited more volunteers and we also we rearranged the, the work group memberships, moved all the inactive ones to the inactive members and then uh, uh, voted in a few, or well, the board voted in a few uh, new voting members for those uh, work groups to make it not look like the work groups are huge and have lots, lots of members because if, if we put if on the website, if we then have the long lists of, of members in each work group, people that want to volunteer for working in those work groups usually tend to think, well, they already have enough people, so we're not going to sign up, right? And that's an issue. And so we're trying to address that by doing this every now and then. And then we had to fix a few website issues, like, for example, the order assignment of uh, tickets. We didn't have that in, uh, last year. We added that this year so that tickets automatically get, get assigned to the, to the person uh, buying the ticket. Yes, yeah, still some work to do, still some bugs to fix. Um, right, and we, again we had a bit of an issue with the number of really active people. So it turned out that even though we do have quite a few members in those working groups, only few of those members are really uh, doing a lot of work. And we, we are trying to fix this. Uh, as you can see, most of the board members, or actually all the board members were really active. Uh, the, um, and then we had these three people down here. I think they deserve to uh, give them a hand. So. Just to name them is, is Alexander Handorf. He is working for the program group. He's sitting down here. He's shy. He doesn't Don't want to. Shy. But he has to stand up anyway later on because he's running for board. <laughs> then we have Christian uh, Barra, who's also running for board. He's sitting here, down here, in the green one. And we have Ricardo Savio, uh, Alex's uh, second incarnation. Where is he? Yeah. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, that's Ricardo. And he also helped a lot. So thank you very much to, to you guys. It doesn't mean that we didn't have other volunteers. It just means like really the, These the were huge the, amount I mean, of... They did a lot of work. Much more than everyone or the other volunteers. Um, so summary for 2016. Working with the AC PISS, the local organization worked really, really well again. We had open, open discussions and everything was done in consensus and uh, this is what we like to see going forward as well. And so that's why we did this uh, call for interest now, to get to know people better. Uh, as in previous years, we had a contract with the local organizer. Uh, for, we had one for 2015. We're going to just use the same one for 2016 because everything worked out well. There are no reasons to change it. Uh, we're just going to change the dates. I think it's time for you to take over, right? <laughs> okay. It's hard to keep track of. Um, we, we as, as we mentioned before, we had uh, quite a few continued uh, improvements to the website. The auto assignment ticket of tickets was a big deal. Um, but also the ID, uh, also to help with the registration desk. Um, we, we, we made a lot of new tools, internal tools for, of the, the, the website to help with the administration and managing the accounts uh, and al also the integration with the, the conference hub. Uh, the, the, we had three repo, repos uh, that we merged into one, uh, which is far easier to maintain. Um, we, we, we are running now on, on DPS uh, server uh, using Docker containers. Um, as far as I, I know, that's, that's working well. Otherwise, we'll, <laughs> we'll know this on the website. Um, so the future call for papers for Python, um, those were basically uh, focused on the on-site team. Um, and all the other work group, working groups will remain active. Um, it, we will try to make it uh, much easier to apply. Um, well, we, we are working on it, um, and basically trim out all the extra uh, things that are not really um, related to venue and catering and local support and all of the small details. Uh, so th those can be continued to be carried on for, by the, the working groups. 
um, basically um, we want uh, all these things to, to make things easier for the local group at the same time they, it's really important that they work inside the group work groups as well integrate well with the current um, um, ecosystem that we, we, we were building um, the well, this the ETS or the on-site uh, team will enter the contracts with the venue carrying and, and and other stuff. It's it's likely that it's easier for local teams to to have contracts with venues. And in some countries, venues, if it, if there are uh, foreign companies, they require a higher um, deposits or stuff like this, and it may impact on, on budgets and, and money money-wise. Um, this year we are doing this new approach to call for proposal. Uh, we are running in two phases, mostly because it's uh, to to make things easier. Uh, we we will have a not formal, not really formal proposal that we call uh, call for interest. That basically a group show up with enough clear ideas, enough uh, a, a, a plan that is not just on the clouds, but you know some. Real, real group that that is, is there that have uh, venue options and, and we we put better details in the the call itself and then th we follow up with the uh, call for papers. Um, I think for for the future it's probably going to be happen before um, this year we were quite full uh, with everything. Uh, so far we had uh, two interests, uh, but one was basically. Uh, communicated that they would not go ahead. Uh, we we have the Python Italia group, uh, which is proposing for Milan or surrounding areas, and um, the Python UK, as I said, is not going to go ahead. So the, the, regarding domains, um, we we tried hard to get back the Python.org. Uh, that's success for now. We, we'll try. Uh, I'm not sure we can do much, much more, uh, but let's see. We tried all kinds of things. I mean, we can we can try this ICANN process to to try to get it back. But in the end, uh, ICANN changed the process recently. I had a look again, and it will probably require a lawyer for for this because the person owning it does not react to anything. Where is um, it in Germany. I think it's close to you. Maybe you should just go there and then we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Knock on his door. That's good. Cool. Let's do that. Um, but it's not high priority because I mean yeah. we're using the .eu domain for everything now, and the .org domain redirects to the EU one, so oh. that still works. But emails, for example, they bounce. So. Um. So yeah, uh, regarding trademarks and logos, the marketing and, and design work group uh, hired a designer uh, to update the logo. Um, it, that process went through the ACPISS, uh, basically similar way like last year. Um, nice outcome as well. Um, um, so we. We still have uh, quite a few issues, especially um, regarding uh, being a, a non-profit in Sweden. 
um, and especially because we don't have board members in Sweden as well. Um, we need uh, to, to, to address the docs reporting. Um, nothing has been really done in that, in that matter. The accounting, uh, we, we have been trying for a year to, to find an accountant and with a lot of frustrations and time wasted and yeah, not a good experience. Um, it, we didn't manage to, to contact and deal with uh, local authorities um, and also, uh, we didn't have uh, much lucky with emails and phone calls and all this this kind of stuff. So, um, the sweet, being in Sweden is has been a really hard hard problem for now. Actually, we, we, we it seems we do have a solution for this now. <laughs> I met uh, Anders at the. Um at the conference, Anders is from Open End as well, which is uh, convenient because the Swedish registered address is at Open End, and uh, he offered to help us with this. So maybe you can say a few words. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I read about these problems you're having with the with the uh, society. So I, I decided that I should step up and and offer my my help. So uh, I we haven't actually discussed how I will help yet, but we're going to do that. Yeah, but I'll do my best to, to help get this sorted. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, so part of the things that we need is actually like finding a solution for VAT invoices. Um, and well, so far with, with what we had until today is Collection, collecting information and um, discussing things. The, the, it's very likely that um, we will require moving the, the EPS um, because we need really need to enter either contracts with venues or, or invoice sponsors and um, be able to receive money. You know, all these these problems are re very real, um, uh, and. To grow the EPS, it would be better also to provide a backup for, like all those things are needed to to, to back up f future conferences. Um, yeah. But then you don't want to grow the budget; you want to grow the reserve of the EPS. That's a good point. It says grow the EPS budget. Yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. Fix that. Yeah, we can switch. You can go ahead with a few slides. Okay. Um, yeah. So yes, the idea is that we want to build up a bit of a budget uh, reserve that we can then use to to do. Uh, can can I have a quick questions about this? Uh, uh, um, Moving, it, 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 does it, uh, this European foundation exist already, or do you want to move to one single country in the EU? Uh, apparently, the um, I mean, the, the, there is this movement to to create something like a, a European association. It's, it's been there for five years but at it's, least. But it's it's they've been. I can answer that. Okay, go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> The, also, the uh, uh, European guideline on the formation of European companies specifically and expressly excludes non-profits. Mm, okay. So, uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I've, I've been looking at this every now and then again to see whether there's some kind of update, but there wasn't any. So we basically just looked at various different countries where you can incorporate. And, um, but we're going to get to that afterwards. So I just, uh, just want to continue here now. Because that's one of the things that we want to uh, discuss, and so we're still in this reporting phase. So, in the end, the, the long-term goal that we want to uh, achieve is we want to turn the EPS into something like a European Python found uh, Software Foundation. So we want to have a regional kind of uh, PSF, so to say. So we want to be able to issue grants, for example, to Python projects in Europe or to user groups, or to help smaller conferences with uh, with grants. 
and uh, we want to build closer ties both to the PSF and also to the, to the community in Europe itself because uh, we have a lot of members in the EPS that have very close ties to their local uh, groups. So it's, in the end, I mean, sort of like the wish is that we have to build something like a tree, you know, a tree, a tree just upside down. So that you have lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of leaves that uh, are, are centered locally and then it all goes up to the, uh, to the PSF eventually. So that's sort of like the long-term goal of where this could, could uh, go. Okay, treasury report. Uh, this is actually something that Anton and Borja should do. Borja is not here. Uh, Anton, you want to say something? Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, given the, uh, the context that we uh, discussed before, um, as a treasurer, I've primarily been trying to get access to the Swedish bank account uh, and the Swedish bank manager. Uh, that has been partly not successful because I haven't been insistent for long enough. And the other part is what didn't help is that uh, our previous treasurer um, has been ill and, and not been able to respond like within like weeks time. Um, and opportunities of me going to go to Berg uh, wants to get the signatures and all that things uh, being arranged. I have been in contact uh, with one person who could do the accounting for maybe this uh, first year. Nay, not maybe, they could do it for the first year. But since we want to extend the activities of the EPS to do more of the contracting and, and setting up things like the collection of the money with visa cards and, and, and other credit cards, so that doesn't have to be done, but each um, change of venue and learned by the local organization. Um, there will be more accounting work, and for that we haven't found anybody yet, uh, although we've tried a few accounts. What really didn't help is my lack of Swedish, um, and not being, not willing to go there just to try and just like stand on the street corners, like who wants to be our accountant? I tried to go, uh, I will go there once, we, once I know that uh, we can get everything signed that is signable, because it's not just trivial to be there and then uh, it costs money. So there's no, at this point, no overview of uh, the exact state of the bank accounts. Uh, Jacob uh, has been willing to transfer money when ne whenever necessary from the bank account to our uh, PayPal account and from that we do the monthly payments that we have for our server, about 100 euros a month, um, and then smaller amounts for the for, for the uh, no, for the DNS yeah, the domain registration, the, the domain and, registration things, so. and that's about it. Right. Well, yeah. Most of the costs for, for, for running the conference were basically put into the conference budget itself, so they were paid by the ACPISS, not yeah. the EPS. So uh, we did not have much of an issue, except that uh, at, at one point this year, for example, the PayPal account went down to more or less zero, so we had to ask the ACPISS to uh, send us some money from the profit from last year uh, into the PayPal account so that we could pay the server again. Right, so what we do now is we, ha uh, we have two accounts uh, at the bank. One is in, in SEK, uh, Swedish Krona, and the other is Euro. Uh, the current assets are probably going to be around 10,000 euros. It's, it's slightly more than that, but this is just an estimate based on the figures that we got for, for the last uh, General Assembly. Yes, yeah, and uh, right, and the PayPal account is currently. Um, I would have to look that up. I don't. I don't really know. It's it's below one thousand euros in any case. Right. So next is the auditor report. That would be Alex Alexander Handoff. Okay. Um, I did. I did the audit. And obviously, I couldn't check on the. Uh, bank accounts in Sweden, as Anton explained. Um, I did check, I had a transaction list from the PayPal account, um, um, got all the corresponding invoices from, for service and stuff. Um, uh, we, I uh, was able to review uh, the loss and profits of 2005 compared that to um, 
the transactions, uh, invoices, and yeah, I will like. I was getting all the access, basically all the bookkeeping, everything was on file, and I can say everything looks fine. So I would, from knowing um, next to our suggest to what's exempt the board is the right one? Huh? Yeah, this one is the. Okay, yeah, vote to discharge, motion. yeah. But, well, you know, with a Swedish bank account, but I, um, yeah, if not, and if not, Jacob has run with the money, I mean. It should be there. We used it last year, so. Yeah. Um, vote for. To discharge. To discharge. Okay. Um, uh, who's uh, in favor? Thank you. That was full vote. We have twelve minutes left. No, yeah. we're not. We're going to run over. <laughs> so right, we're going to speed up now. So uh, what we um, want to do before voting for the board is we would like to. Um, increase the number of board members that we can have in the EPS as maximum. Right now the, the bylaws say that we can have two to six directors plus one chair. So you get nine, uh, you get, uh, currently you get seven directors in total and we would like to increase that to two to eight directors plus one chair giving us nine directors in total. Um, and the reason why we want to do this is because the, the EPS board members are the most active ones doing the running the, the Europython conference and we uh, we simply need more people uh, helping us with this and, and so we'd like to we'd like to extend the number of, of directors that we have in the EPS to to a total of nine so. any any comments on this Suggestions? As extras? Yeah, I, I don't know the English term for the Swedish term is CPI. As in, it, it's, a, it's a board member who it normally has no voting rights, but if, one of the other, uh, but, but if one of the voting members are absent, they get a vote instead. We don't have that in the bylaws, no. We don't. What we what we're doing is, and we're going to do this again this year. We we have uh, created something that which is not really in the bylaws. It's basically the we have uh, board members from previous boards that stay on the board mailing list, and then they can help us because they have institutional knowledge, right? And we ask we can ask them for comments. So basically, they are non-voting, of course, but they still can see what the the actions of the of the board and. Um, this has worked out well in, in the past, and we'd like to keep it that way. It's it's not really enshrined in the bylaws, so, and yeah, so, and and those people are usually don't have enough time to actually help actively in the in the organization. You haven't had a problem with the uh, board, board members who have sort of disappeared, so that you run low on members. No, no. Everyone is very much. Uh, Active and, and, and willing to help, unless they, of course, they have other issues that why they, why they cannot attend. But uh, apart from that, we've never had a, an issue, for example, with getting a quorum to to actually do voting in the board meetings. So that's not been an issue. Um, I know that increasing the number even more, so for example, to 11, uh, that can create problems because I've been on the PSF board for quite a while, and we have 11 directors on the on the PSF board. And getting a quorum was very often, at least in, in recently, until uh, we, we changed the, the model that we can also have proxy votes. Uh, it was difficult. I think yeah. Naomi can come. Short question. Would it be a good idea to have always an uneven number of directors? Sorry? Would, uh, some foundations have an uneven number. They require either three, five, seven, or nine, or something like this. They don't have even numbers, so you would always have a decision. There cannot be a no, tie. No, we, we have an, uh, it's uneven as well. I mean, it's nine directors. It's one director is called chair. The chair doesn't have any special Yeah, but it's, that, that's it's a maximum number, nine. Yes. 
So ah, there, there, ah, can, you mean there can be, there, it can be either seven or nine, but not eight, that's what I mean. Because even, there can be four, four and four against, and you might have a problem, you cannot reach a decision. I don't know if this is a problem. Oh, yeah. Um. Okay. When you need, you need Okay, you need 50% or how much you need to make it have a quorum? So you need five. If it's nine, you need five people. Yeah, okay. So just, just from experience, maybe a comment on this. Uh, so far, we've mostly done uh, all the, all the uh, resolutions on the board unanimously. There were maybe sometimes abstentions because people were uh, like in conflict of interest, uh, but apart from that, it was, it was, we never had the case where we could not uh, reach a decision. Yeah, also, also I, I share the idea not to block by having even numbers, but it would also mean that if we, for example, have eight candidates for the board, uh, we would say it must, it's in, uh, we would have to cut down to seven. Yeah, well, I mean, if we, yeah, but if we want have somebody saying, hey, I'm really happy to join the board to do a lot of work, we really depend on it, I think. Uh, my, my, yeah, my quick thought on this is I would rather prefer have an extra two hands uh, helping during the year than having a potential problem. I think the communication has been really, really good uh, so far with all the members. So, yeah. Yeah, so it, it hasn't posed a problem in, in, in the past. I don't think it's going to pose a problem in the future. So, uh, who's in favor of the proposition? Mm, who's against? Against? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absent? Okay. Full vote. Cool. In favor. Thank you. So next part is candidates uh, for the board for the next term, 2016, 2017. So these are the candidates that we, uh, that we have. Um, we sent around an, a, a blog post describing every single one. Uh, should we perhaps ask everyone to maybe come up on the stage and, and do a sentence or two, or should we yeah. go directly to a vote? Well, we had time issues. So, yeah. We can still, we, we'll still vote on everyone. Actually, I would rather not do this because we had this last year and yeah, it didn't work out. And, yeah. and so I don't want discussions again. So let's just vote on every we single tried, one. We tried to do that as well last year. didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I wish. <laughs> okay, we, we can, of course, have everyone uh, stand up here and say a few words if you, if you like that. What's the general kind of feeling? Should we? That's a good idea. That's a very good yeah. idea. Yes. But be before we do this, we have Perfect. one extra agenda item, which is um, uh, we have to decide now. Uh, the bylaws state now with this change that we just voted on. It, it states that we have uh, one chair plus two to eight board members. And we now have to decide how many board members we want to have for the next period. We're going to get to this particular point later on because there's a member's motion uh, wanting, uh, suggesting to remove this part and always use the maximum number. But we have to vote on this now because the bylaws currently look like this. So we have to, um, rec we recommend leaving the board size uh, to the set to the maximum. So having eight board members, uh, sorry, nine board members in total, eight directors and a chair. So you have to call for a vote now. So, uh, who's in favor? Okay. Um, against? Absent? Okay. Full vote. 
Great. And now we can actually vote on the board members. And I'd suggest that Borja stand up. Borja is not here. Uh, he did a really good job. He uh, was excellent in negotiations with the venue and the caterer. Uh, he deserves a good hand for getting us better food. This, well, not better food, but let's say different food. <laughs> different, different food. <laughs> different food this year. I think uh, a lot of people appreciated that. So, uh, votes for Borja in favor? Against? Absent? Okay. Who votes in favor? No. Christian. Next one is Christian. Yes. Say something. Uh, so, my name is Christian. I'm a member of the organizer from the first edition of Euro Python Bilbao. And uh, yes, I plan to submit the next proposal for the next conference in one hour, I think. So. Okay, um, in, in favor? Against? <laughs> <laughs> Absent? Okay, for voting in favor. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me open the chat just a second. Because he seems to be online. Yeah, he just texted. Oh, yeah? He wish he was here. Yes, okay, so let's move on to, to uh, uh, sorry, no, no, oh, you can't read it, it's just a second. Votes in favor? Um, against? <laughs> um, absent? Okay, full vote uh, in favor. Hi, my name is Daria. I was uh, here last year. Uh, I was an organizer in the organizing team last year, and I'm here for this conference and maybe for the next, I hope so. So. Thank you, Mr. Savio. Uh, yes, I'm Alexander. I joined last year uh, organizing the first Bilbao conference, and I've been on the program work group and helping with all the stuff. And yeah. Okay, in favor? Against? I think absent. Okay, full in favor. Okay, I need to say something, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm Mark Lemberg. I've been working uh, with the uh, new EPS structure for quite a while now. Um, I really love the work. It's a lot of work, uh, and I love to continue working on it and moving the EPS forward, and like what we already mentioned, moving it more into the Python community and basing it more in the Python community. So make the whole thing a bit... Uh, more than just a conference organization. And that would be my goal. In favor? Against? 
Absent? Okay, thank you. Who voted in favor? Um, Ante van der Noot from Holland. Um, been board member for three years now, together with Mark Andre. Apart from my attempts in getting the treasury in hand, um, I'm on the code of conduct committee, and I'm the one pushing your video to the uh, to archive.org and YouTube after the show. Um, that's about it. And I fold your t-shirt. Okay. Uh, okay. Who voted in favor? Uh, now, my, my turn. Well, um, I'm a co-founder of the AC PSS, the local team that has has been organizing your Python in Bilbao. Uh, I I was I have been EPS board member this uh, year. I'm running again for can for candidate. Uh, I mostly have been uh, in contact with the sponsors, working with, together with Alex, the other Alex, uh, for program. Yeah, that's uh, in favor. <laughs> uh, against, absent. Okay, thank you. Full vote in favor. So then we have a non voting Emeritus. Uh, and or, o o year, we didn't vote for Oyer. Oh, we need to vote for Oyer. Do you yes. want me to speak for him? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he helped uh, with the web work group. Uh, he, he was an EPS, an EPS board member this year. He's running again. He worked with web. He's also a co-founder of the ACPISS. He's actually the president. Um, he has been doing the refunds. Uh, what I was doing, co communications, and we, we have ten minutes left for the rest. In favor? Of the <laughs> uh, against? Absent? Okay, thank you for vote. For, in favor? Okay, and for for, for the um, sorry? No, he can't. Run. He's he's not running for board now. He's. Yeah, right. So for we, I don't think we need to vote for the non-voting Emeritus members because the, the bylaws simply don't state anything about them. But we want to have Vicky, and we want to have Vicky, by the way, is back there. She wasn't there last year, so. <laughs> <laughs> she was a board member in 2012, 2012 2013, yes, right, right. for them and and Fabio okay. as well Fabio stepped down so uh, he was the chair of the EPS in the last year so give him a hand yeah we'll not talk for a while maybe at the closing I would just say thank you but uh, has been a pleasure to work with everyone and stepping back just to give more space to more active people uh, for family Issues, um, so that's that. Uh, cool, uh, that's the wrong window. This one. So right. So next is uh, election of a chair of the board because Fabio stepped down. I decided to throw in my hat. I just put this to the side here. So basically, I already said everything that I wanted to say about the EPS and how to move forward. Uh, I've been involved in this particular conference edition quite a bit, and I would like to do the same for next year. And if you want me, you can have me. <laughs> uh, votes uh, in favor? Uh, against? Absent? Okay, thank you. Full vote. Thank in you very favor. much for your trust.
right, so now we need uh, an auditor again and one replacement. So basically, auditor was uh, Alex Hendorf. <laughs> uh, Alex Hendorf. See, it's fun using Telegram. Um, he was auditor last year. Um, I don't th there are no special requir requirements for auditors, so if Alex wants to do it again, for example, then uh, he could, <laughs> looking at you. No? Ah, okay. So we need someone else to do it. Basically what you get to do is you get to see all the bank accounts, uh, or not. Uh, <laughs> you, g you get all the, all the paperwork that we can provide you to do a proper job at auditing the stuff that's available. Stefan? Okay. And we need one replacement in case, against, in case uh, Stefan is not available. It's very unlikely. Yeah. I can. You can, Raul? Okay, Raul is back up for Stefan. Oh, we need to vote on this. Um, okay, vote on Stefan. Uh, in favor? Uh, against? Absent? Okay, full vote. Full vote. In, uh, in favor? For Raul? Uh, okay, for Raul as a replacement, in favor? Against, <laughs> absent. Thank you. Okay, so next is uh, optional election of a nomination committee. This is for nominating board members. Uh, so far, we've not never had this. Um, I don't think we really need this because anyone can just self-nominate. So uh, the idea is to not have one. Anyone against this? Ah, oh, sorry, Alex, your job. Uh, in favor? In, in favor of not having one. Yeah. <laughs> Against? Okay. Cool. Next one. Uh, come on. Budget presentation. So it really isn't that there isn't much to to present here for for the next year. I mean, the biggest expense that we do have is the the server that we use. It's about a hundred euros per month, and then maybe. Uh, Small figure for domains. Uh, we expect again a, a good income for 2016, and because most of the uh, invoices and everything else is for this year is paid by the ACPISS, uh, there isn't much for the for the EPS to actually have in the budget. Yeah. Alex, any questions? No. No. So there's nothing much that we can present in terms of budget. <clears throat> the next thing is uh, membership fee. Membership doesn't cost anything. We'd like to keep it that way. So we need to vote on this again. In favor? <laughs> Against? <laughs> Absent? Okay, thank you. Cool. Right, so next proposition from the board is to broaden the membership of uh, the EPS to make it possible for anyone using Python in Europe, uh, or is even that uh, it's not restricted to Europe itself. It's just uh, for, we, we want to further the use of Python in Europe. So, and we want to make it possible for anyone uh, furthering the EPS mission to be uh, to uh, enable them to become an EPS member. So um, that's the idea. And the second idea is that we rebase the EPS from Gothenburg, Sweden, to another EU country. Yeah. Uh, Now, right now, it's the, the focus is just on organizing the conference. Are there requirements from people that are not into Europe to, get, to become a member of EPS? Yes, we had, we had uh, people who wanted to become an EPS member because they understood the EPS as being already something like a European PSF, and so they wanted to join, and we had to turn them down because our bylaws say if, oh, you, if you're not uh, organizing a conference, then you cannot be a member, right? If you're not attending the conference. And or or attending the conference, yes. Yes, yes, of course. No, no this is just the intro, right? Uh, and the second one is the uh, initiate the rebasing of the EPS from Gothenburg to another EU country. So those, uh, this is the intro. So the first proposal is broaden the membership. Uh, it's the same thing again. So I'm just going to skip this. So we need a bylaws change. So this is the proposal for the bylaws change. <coughs> so the 
the purpose is uh, to further the use of the programming language Python in Europe and organize events centered around the programming language Python to support this. And we need a second one. Second change, membership is open to individuals who wish to actively engage in implementing the EPS mission, which we just uh, defined in number two. So that is the uh, proposed change. What is OE writing? Okay. Any comments on this? Discussion? No? And let's vote. Vote in favor. In favor of change the bios. Okay. In favor? Uh, against? Uh, absent? Okay, full vote in favor. Okay, next one is the uh, rebasing the EPS. So this is this is not yet what to vote on. Uh, this is just a summary. So the rebasing of the EPS would work in two steps. The first step is to create a new nonprofit as subsidiary of the uh, EPS in another EU country. And the second step would then be to move over all the assets from the EPS in Sweden to that new entity uh, that we've created in the first step and then to close down the uh, EPS in Sweden. So at this General Assembly, we can of course only vote on the first one, which is to charge the board with the creation of the full subsidiary in the country to be determined by the board of the directors according to the criteria as indicated in the document sent to the members list by Anton earlier on in July. So Anton created this document where he analyzed various different uh, uh, countries, and then we also had a few uh, extra uh, input from members on the members list. Of course, we're going to look at that as well, and then we're going to uh, try to figure out which is the best place to to you go to. So just to, uh, as a very short summary of why we want to do this, the most important thing is that we currently cannot get a VAT ID and so we cannot be financially operational as as organization. And because we tried last year to get one and it failed, the authorities are very unlikely to give us one because we'd have to convince them that the failure last year was not, was there was something wrong with the application or something and this would be very difficult to do. And the second thing is that, uh, of course, we don't have access to the bank accounts, and this whole issue would not go away. And then there's a third issue, uh, that is that there is no registry in Sweden for nonprofits. So it's extremely difficult to convince anyone that you, as, for example, director or as treasurer of the EPS, are actually authorized as such. So uh, all we have is we, have, we, we can give them a signed document with all the signatures from all the directors and that's it. Uh, and so there's no official way of getting that information. Okay, we need to uh, really to hurry up. So, uh, can we vote for this? Uh, in favor? Against? Absent? Okay, full vote in favor. So, the next one is uh, is the email from from Kristen. It's actually two emails. It's going to be really quick here. Hopefully, this is the first one. This is probably too small to read. So, basically, what she uh, recommends is in here. She wants to define some kind of minimum for the for the number of uh, board members. I assume you have all read this on the mailing list. Uh, and then she he, she wants to uh, 
she proposes to remove this point eight, which says determination of the size of the board for the period until the next annual meeting of the General Assembly, which is part a uh, point eight of the uh, current bylaws. She proposes to remove that. The first part about this minimum aspect, uh, she. <coughs> I really have to hurry up. Uh, she re retracted again in the second email because this is already part of the bylaws and so she proposes to just vote on the second one to remove this point eight from the agenda. I think it's a good idea. We just had this, this uh, vote and, and o o always using the maximum is, is certainly a good thing to do. If you have lots of people who want to help then of course make them help, right? Yeah. So just to repeat, the, the, the proposal is to always have the maximum of the board limit well, you, would, you, would, you, would always, you would always have, to have the range that is left by the bylaws, so it's always between two and eight. Yes, you, you cannot, for example, if, if you just have like three candidates, yeah. then three is okay. If you have two candidates, two is okay. If you have one candidate, it's not okay. Right. Yeah. right. Yes. Okay. But of course, um, and if you have more than, than uh, eight or nine uh, yeah. candidates, then, then of course you have to so choose. Always the lim the right? yes, so we, we don't really lose anything, we just okay. gain something. In favor? Against? Absent? Too absent. Cool. General discussion? Anything to discuss? We can discuss outside, uh, having a coffee maybe or something. Yeah? yeah? Good suggestion? You should close the session. Yes, let's close, let's close the meeting. <laughs> We're closing at 15.47. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>